Okay, I want to work a problem involving um, enzyme kinetics and the glycolysis pathway. So what the problem says is list the allosteric modulators for hexakinase and explain any differences in the regulation for isoforms found in the muscle versus the liver. Well, I never defined isoforms, but an isoform is basically an, en an enzyme that has a slightly different amino acid composition, which in turn gives it slightly different kinetic parameters, okay? And there are two different isoforms that produce the same reaction, and that is that there's two different isoforms, hexakinase and glucokinase, hexakinase being in the muscle, glucokinase being in the liver, that essentially perform the same operation. They phosphorylate glucose, making glucose 6-phosphate and they're known as isoforms of each other. And they want to know in this question, you know, what are the differences? So the first thing I want to do is I want to say, in the muscle, so in the muscle, we have hexakinase, and there's several, there's several things that there's several things that um, both allosteric inhibitors and activators. So first thing I want to write down is glucose 6 phosphate, okay? And glucose 6 phosphate is the product of the hexakinase reaction. It's the first reaction in the glycolysis pathway. And glucose 6 phosphate inhibits. So that's exactly what I'm going to write down. I'm just going to say it inhibits. Okay, so glucose 6-phosphate inhibits hexakinase. Now, ATP also inhibits. Okay, remember, high energy levels, no need to keep making more ATP. So ATP also is an inhibitor, an allosteric inhibitor. So this, as well, inhibits. And then there's a couple of activators. And the activators are AMP, because remember, that's a signal that there's low energy. So this is activates. OK. And the other activator is actually glucose itself, which kind of makes sense, because that's the substrate. OK. So glucose also activates. Now that's in the muscle. That's what's going on in the muscle. Glucose 6-phosphate is inhibiting, ATP is inhibiting, AMP is activating, and glucose is an activator. These are all allosteric molecules. They bind to a site other than the active site on the enzyme hexakinase, and they alter the shape of the um, of the enzyme chain, you know, induce some conformational change that in some cases, like with ATP and glucose 6-phosphate, makes it more difficult to bind glucose and um, and and produce the glucose 6-phosphate, and in other cases, it makes it easier, okay, like AMP and glucose. Now, the liver isoform, okay, so in the liver, so liver isoform does not respond to allosteric modifiers, okay, or modulators, rather. It's not respond to allosteric modulators. Okay, so that's really what the key is here. I mean, in the liver, you, you, the isoform, it just doesn't respond to these allosteric modulators. And since the liver is more likely to store the glucose as glycogen, because that's what the liver prefers to do, there's always a lot of glycogen in the liver, so it prefers to store the glucose as glycogen, the first step to which is to make glucose 6-phosphate, okay? So, basically, the liver does not respond here to these, and that's the main difference. But, you know, also, what you'll notice about it is that the KM, remember I said, it alters its kinetic parameters, because it's an isoform, and you have different kinetic parameters. So the KM values also differ. So the KM values also differ um, with... With glucokinase, so glucokinase having a lower, okay, having a lower affinity for the glucose. 
Okay, so glucokinase actually has a lower affinity for the glucose. And that makes sense. You know why? Because the liver is wants to allow the other tissues, like the muscle that rely on glucose for energy, to get enough glucose. Okay, so the liver's not going to start, you know, phosphorylating glucose to make glycogen if the muscles are, you know, you're exercising and your and your muscles are... Uh, need more energy in order to keep producing these muscle contractions and such, it's not going to change that. So, so, so it's, it makes perfect sense that the liver, you know, doing this sort of non-essential process of storing glucose as glycogen, um, is going to allow the other tissues to get the glucose first. And that's essentially what's happening. Now the rest of the question, actually, there's another part to it, and it says, for hexokinase, draw a graph showing the rate of enzyme catalysis as a function of substrate concentration in the presence and absence of the modulator discussed of a modulator discussed above. So I could pick any one. But the easiest one to do this with is um is if we use glucose six phosphate. Okay, glucose six phosphate is is probably the most important one to to know and understand, but it's also the easiest one to draw the graph with. So they're saying this is the concentration of glucose. Okay. So this is the concentration of glucose. And over here is the rate of hexokinase. So those are my axes labeled rate of hexokinase, glucose over here. And they want, they're asking me to, to explain what's going on here. So first I'm going to draw the normal curve. Okay, so it would be something like that. It would be more hyperbolic. And, I'll, and this is G6P. Okay, so that's glucose 6-phosphate. And I want to put a minus sign in front of that to indicate that this is without. So without. Or I could just put without. It, that might be more clear here. Okay, so without glucose 6-phosphate. We get this hyperbolic curve. Hexokinase is really operating very efficiently and as the concentration of glucose increases. And we know that. If you increase the concentration of whatever the substrate is for a particular enzyme, it's going to increase its rate in most cases. But that rate is also going to level off. Now, if I add, it, as my product builds up, as I get more and more glucose 6-phosphate, and, the, and maybe the maybe the pathway is not moving as efficiently as it should, there's a buildup of glucose 6-phosphate, what's going to happen? Well, essentially what's going to happen is this curve is going to basically level off. Okay? So this would be with glucose 6-phosphate. Okay, so with glucose 6-phosphate, we're going to see that the curve is essentially going to level off. It's going to become more sigmoidal. All right? And the reason for that, if you were to give an explanation for this, you'd want to say that G6P inhibits. Okay, so G6P inhibits hexokinase. Um which essentially means it's going to take higher levels of glucose to reach the same to reach the same level of activity as it would without the glucose 6-phosphate. Okay? So it inhibits hexokinase. Okay, and it so it will take higher levels of glucose before the enzyme becomes active. All right, so it takes higher levels of glucose before the enzyme becomes active. And what you could see in the graph here is that there's just a shift, you know, it becomes more sigmoidal. So it's hyperbolic when there's no glucose 6-phosphate, and it's more sigmoidal when the um, when there is a, a high concentration of glucose 6-phosphate. And in the absence of G6P, you know, hexokinase reaches that one-half Vmax level at lower glucose concentration. We could just arbitrarily call it right here. So this would be, you know, one-half...
But regardless, it, it reaches, and, and in this case, it takes longer to reach one half B max, okay? So that's basically what I wanted to say.